Alrighty guys, we're back for some Wolves and Planeswalkers, and this is a Streets of New Capenna standard build. We're going to go over the deck, then hop right into some normal play mode. But first things first, for anyone who may not know, I'm Redcat, and I play aggro decks and any decks with red in them as well, so I hope that sounds fun to you. Also guys, we do got that relatively new Discord. There's a link in the description. Make sure you join that up. I keep forgetting to mention it, right? Who do we got in the build here? We have a couple Ascendant Pack Leaders and three Luxur Giada's Gifts here on the front end of the build. The counters on the Pack Leader is going to be pretty important if we have nothing else to equip the Giada's Gift to, right? Now what is this card? This is a Legendary Artifact Equipment. Equipped creature gets plus one plus one for each counter on it. That's any counter that's not like plus one plus one counters or anything like that. That's any counter it gets a plus one plus one for while this is equipped to it, right? That's pretty spicy, but you can equip it to a Planeswalker for only one mana, which is pretty cool. And then equipped permanent isn't a Planeswalker and is a creature in addition to its other types. So you essentially make a Planeswalker into a creature with this and then loyalty abilities can still be activated, which is awesome, right? So the normal equip cost on this is actually three mana. So you really, really want to attach this to a Planeswalker to get some value out of it. But we have plenty of creatures in here that uh, hopefully get some value out of Giada's Gift as well, right? So we do have an Outland Liberator to help us remove artifacts and enchantments. We have four Pack Song Pups because I think that counter is important. But also I think Life Gain is pretty important right now too. There's a lot of decks just flying in. Uh, like Boros, for example, a little bit of Life Gain off of the Pack Song Pup definitely doesn't hurt in those scenarios, right? We have four ranger class because obviously the counters on level two is important and it gives us a wolf it belongs here right we have four brutal cathars amazing removal and a werewolf we have reckless storm seeker a very aggressive card and a werewolf <laughs> we have four tovalars as well now even though this is legendary i think this is worth the four of here uh it you know it helps us get card advantage with those draws hopefully but also just being able to bypass the normal like mess that you got to go through to actually get it to nighttime all you need is three or more wolves and or werewolves and that's not hard to do in this deck at all any werewolf deck really getting to nighttime is pretty darn powerful so this is an important card here um so our top end is all planeswalkers and it is a very spicy guys we have three Wandering Emperors, which, I mean, is obviously powerful, right? But that first ability, they put a counter on something and it gains first strike until end of turn. I mean, that's pretty spicy because that already works with Giada's Gift. But could you imagine equipping Giada's Gift to the Wandering Emperor and then giving that plus one, plus one counter to itself, too? That's a pretty chunky uh, creature that you could potentially be swinging in, in with, right? And then if it's nighttime and you got the Storm Charged Slasher... Yeah, give that trample too, and now you're just swinging in for a whole bunch of damage. That sounds pretty spicy, and it doesn't seem that outlandish to go ahead and pull it off, right? So you have four Arlins now. It's kind of the same concept uh, as the Tovalars. Even though this is legendary, I think it's worth having four of them in here, especially if you drop this on turn four and go minus three. There's going to be moments where the opponent can just immediately kill the Arlen, and so having more of them on hand never hurt anything, right? Just an important card in Werewolf Builds too. It also works really well. The plus one ability here, until your next turn, you may cast creature spells as though they had flash, and each creature you control enters the battlefield with a plus one plus one counter. So again, the counters work with the Giada's Gift, but giving our creatures flash, opening up the possibility... For us to flash in a Brutal Cathar or a Wandering Emperor or something sounds pretty darn cool, right? So on the very, very top end, we have a couple Elspeths here, which obviously that first ability works wonders with Giada's Gift, giving a counter and then another counter for Flying, First Strike, Lifelink, or Vigilance. That's pretty cool. But also, as we know, that minus three is pretty darn aggressive and hitting something like a Brutal Cathar with that minus three could just end up winning you the game or, yeah, breaking up a lockdown board state. Or just there's a bunch of other stuff that hitting that minus three is, yeah, pretty darn good, right? Maybe we're just searching for the Giada's gift, honestly. You never know. 
Uh, we don't we don't really need to look at the minus seven. I have yet to do it, but creating five three three white angels seems pretty good. You know, it seems, seems pretty spicy overall. But usually it's that minus three ability that we use the Else, Elspeth for, right? So the mana base guys. Oh, I had a tough time putting the mana base together because the front end of the build here only requires green, and then when we hit that uh, three drop, we got to make sure we have at least one white source to make sure that we can actually turn three brutal Cathar if we have to. Which, if you are up against an aggro build, then that is going to be pretty important, right? So yeah, the pathways lean towards green to make sure we can get green out early, right? And then we do have all these other dual land in here, hopefully doing something properly. We also have a lair and a who endures too. I think that's it guys. I hopefully went over the deck well enough. Uh, either way, let's go ahead and hop into some normal play mode and see how it goes. Okay, I'm pretty excited. I'm pretty nervous. I know Naya werewolves is a thing sometimes i i don't think i've ever played against naya werewolves but i know i've heard people talk about it before maybe i've played against naya werewolves like a while ago but yeah this is like this is naya werewolves but it's actually planeswalkers too so this is a great hand guys holy cow yeah all we're missing is a one drop at this point oh what two drop do we actually want here all the storm giants hmm Hmm, might be up against some control, guys. That would suck. Nothing we haven't handled in the past, though. So, yeah, you gotta be prepared for those double white on the Wandering Emperor and everything. So you gotta be ready to uh, drop these pathways on white, too. Which I think we can safely do here. I'm gonna do it this turn, and we're gonna go ahead and start... Uh, let's start with the ranger class actually let's start with the ranger class i think that makes more sense in my mind at least okay three blue i <laughs> uh, feel like anything i play here is gonna eat a counter but we'll see won't we uh, i think because we could be playing right into a counter spell i think we hold the tovalar back and attempt the pack song before combat and we can also get the uh, Giada's Gift down, which is a great draw. Nice. Yeah, saw it coming. Okay. Okie dokies. Let's see if we can get the Luxure down. It hits. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, it's gonna be a it's it's gonna be an uphill battle. Oh no. Yeah, we just got some basic control coming from the opponent. They could just have a simple sock coming just ready for these three. Um, very tempted by the Arlen, but I'm going to wait till we can guarantee that it can come out, right? Uh, let's... Yeah, we only have one green, so that does suck. I'm going to attempt the Tovalar this time. Drawing... Oh, it hits. Nice. Drawing a card here could be huge, so... Okay, that's that's not green. <laughs> but we got the double white. Uh, or, or I guess we already had the double white because I played the pathway on white too. That's okay. There's plenty of green sources in the build. We'll get there. Especially if the opponent doesn't uh, wipe our board here. Playing this down and then equipping the Arlen could be super spicy, but the Arlen won't have haste, so... I don't, I don't think it'll have haste, right? I think Arlen would still enter with summoning sickness. Right? I don't know. I feel like I should test that now. Hmm. Oh, Desert Doom. Nice. Okay, we got the other green source too. Right, so we have some options. I'm okay with just equipping. We could get a couple wolves down with this too. I think I'm okay with equipping the uh, Giada's Gift here. 
That's pretty cool. Yeah, it sure does have summoning sickness. So let's go ahead. Minus three effectively because they can't attack it now that it's a creature. Um, now nah, we'll go ahead and plus it. Go ahead and plus it that time and we can't effectively swing in without losing the dire overlord. This is a legendary creature, not a wolf, so the Tovalar isn't going to uh, flip to nighttime unless the opponent flips it to nighttime here, so. I don't know. What would you guys have done there? Would you guys have uh, spread out some other creatures? They only have one white source, so a Doomscar might not be coming in anytime soon. This is interesting. They really are lacking in the... Okay, Faithful Absence, yeah. Yeah, that'll do it, I guess. I guess I should have made those two wolves, huh? So they're lacking in white, and they're going to let us draw here unless they have a Fading Hope. I don't know, man. That's weird. That was, a, that was weird. One, two. Going to get this down, get this down. It's too bad we don't have three to equip that now, but... We don't want to run into a board wipe. So we'll probably keep the clue open. Counter. Swing. And we'll spread it out. Nice. Down to 10. Draw two. That's pretty big for us, guys. Brutal Cathar. <laughs> and a Reckless Storm Seeker as well. Our, our deck is just packed with good cards. Uh, that's probably a sot coming, or maybe it is the Doomscar getting ready, so I'm not going to play anything. We're just going to keep that clue open. And that Ward 4 is open too. Thirst for Discovery. I'm not feeling too scared right now, honestly. Opponent going down to 10. I don't know. I feel like we can get this damage through. If they had more white sources, I'd be pretty scared. Devastating Mastery. Yeah, they were just, uh, I think they were getting unlucky. So a Doomscar would kill their Desert Doom. Okay, they're swinging with it. This is a Doomscar if I've ever seen one. Let's see it. Let's see it. That's a Doomscar. We're going to go ahead and use the clue. Draw an extra card. A Pack Song Pop. Not bad. Gain two life. Yeah, now we don't have to deal with the Desert Doom either. So, Reckless Storm Seeker, Axong Pup. We get to reestablish a board state here, which is pretty good. Unfortunately, the mana's been weird enough to where, like, see, we still can't equip the uh, Luxure if we do those two things. Okay, so Paxong gets a counter. You're going to get haste and get a counter as well. The so four damage coming in. And you guys can imagine if we were able to equip that too, a little bit of extra damage never hurt anything. Revitalize. Yep, yeah, back up to nine. Some simple uh, white-blue control, only the opponent took a long while to get their white sources, so... We'll see. Nice. Wandering Emperor. Now that's a good draw. Do we give Wandering Emperor uh, haste with the Storm Seeker? I feel like it's just going to die. We know they have Fateful Absence. Probably other spot removal too. That's super spicy though. This has to be spot removal. It really does. I'm going to attempt it. It's a little bit greedy, I know. We could just flash it in. Okay, fine. You guys convinced me. <laughs> gotta give something haste, though. We gotta go for the victory. We gotta put put some pressure on them, for sure. Uh, and then we might as well equip the gift. No, we only have three mana open for the... Yeah, we want a Wandering Emperor. This is weird. <laughs> the mana has been, like, one short. The Luxure... Equipping to a creature it just happens to be very bad, doesn't it? We'll spread it out. Okay, they, they got their own Wandering Emperor. Um. Okay, 
so they're gonna exile Stormseeker, right? And they're taking seven. They're gonna take the Pack Song Pup. Take six. No, seven. Seven, yeah. Still seven. And we have Wandering Emperor for their turn, which we're gonna definitely attempt. Definitely gonna attempt the Wandering Emperor on their turn. Because they're probably going to make a 2-2 with this. They know it's probably going to die. Unless they have spot removal for the Storm Seeker. Bro, that is brutal. Oh, that gets rid of everything. Oh no, except for Planeswalkers. Which means they can plus the Wandering Emperor if they want. They don't know we're about to drop this though. They go for the 2-2 anyways. Makes sense to me. At that point, yeah, farewell's brutal. Very, very brutal. Yeah, everything about this game was a little bit awkward with mana. Like, not being able to do everything. They negate the Wandering Emperor with their last two mana, and... I sense a nail in the coffin, but we do have, um... We do have Brutal Cathar and Lair of the Hydra, but let me guess. Getting this to four is gonna be... One... Two, three, four. Yet we'll have two mana for the Brutal Cathar. <laughs> we might as well do it anyways, right? It's still a pretty good swing. It's still a pretty good swing. Yeah, the mana's been, like, lagging behind just a little bit here. Which is kind of hilarious. They're at one. We're almost there, guys. We're almost there. The Revitalize has saved another opponent. Oh, Memory Deluge. Oh, they get to find so much here. Is it going to be enough for the Lair of the Hydra, though? Passing it over. No counters there. Yeah, uh, the Luxure is pretty bad here. We're going to do X is 4. To make sure that, like, another uh, Revitalize doesn't slow us. It could be two vi Revitalize, but for now I'm just going to go X is four. But yeah, that's spot removal, probably. If it's two spot removals, then I guess GG opponent, right? Because, like, that's like, yeah, they gain two, they get rid of Lair, they're down to one. <laughs> Somebody save me, guys! <laughs> Now they get a uh, seven memory deluge here, which is going to be a devastating. Back down to one. We're gonna get the Giada's gift down. They can get another two two. What you got for me, opponent? What you got? What you got, homie? It's got to be the Memory Deluge find removal for the Cathar, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's... So, a 7 Memory Deluge find removal for the Cathar, but if they don't find removal, finding, like, a Revitalize will do it, too. Getting back up to 4 mana. Sunset Revelry, back up to 5. Also, 4 life, not mana. That's not what I meant to say. Elspeth Resplendent. Woo! Hi there. That'll let me fly on in with a 4-4 four, four Brutal Cut. No, a 5-5. Five, five. That's it. We did it. We got there. Maybe they have one mana. Fly. Equip. It could be a Fading Hope. Come on. There it is, guys. We found it. Man, the, <laughs> the mana finally lined up for us there, didn't it? Just enough. Oh, what a top deck that was. <laughs> Woo! That was a stressful match, guys. Ah, oh, man, control is awful. <laughs> control is literally the worst to go up against. Do you guys agree? Uh, gi give me some chunky creature mid-range any day. Chunky creature gaming life mid-range. 
Ah, oh, man. Yeah, uh, control is a tough nut to crack sometimes, isn't it? Like, the opponent barely had anything at the beginning, but they just, like, slowly but surely started to gain um, more and more advantage. The first Doom Scar, then the uh, Farewell, and then the Double Wandering Emperor. It's like, that's rough, man. The only reason we found that was because we got lucky. We got plenty of land in the deck. We can keep this. Yeah, there we go. See? Easy. Easy peasy. We got the third. Do we play this on white or green? All right, I'm going to play it on white to make sure we have the double white for the Wandering Emperor and hope that doesn't slow me down at all. Got some, we got some runes from the opponent or some just uh, simple Selesnia. Fight rigging, nice. That's a great card with Kami of Transients, huh? Yep, swing on in. No blocks. Wandering Emperor is going to hit that pretty good, but we're probably just going to start with the Brutal Cathar. Give Pack Song Pup a plus one and swing on in. Pretty good, man. Pretty good. Tovalar's looking spicy. A land off the top is looking spicy. Ukai into removal for the Cathar. Yep, touch to the Spirit Realm. Gets the Kami of Transients back. Plus one there. Land. Wandering Emperor could be really good. A full swing could be really good with the Reckless Storm Seeker, too. I doubt they block if we go Tovalar as well. Let's wait on the Emperor and see what we draw. I think they take the three. Oh my goodness, they trade. That's a great trade for us, guys. That's a really good trade. Borrowed time. <laughs> yeah, Wandering Emperor is going to... It's just going to feel so good. Hitting that Kami of Transients with the Wandering Emperor. <laughs> okay. So, Lair the Hydra. Pass turn. It is night time. Hollowed Haunting. Scary. Very scary. Fight Rigging goes up to six. They don't get the card yet. And that taps down and we gobble it on up. Don't be... Don't be protection in the opponent's hand. It sure isn't. Let's go. Oh my goodness. Well, Hollowed Haunting is a problem. Hollowed Haunting is definitely a problem. It's going to be Tovalar. Reckless Storm Seeker. We're going to go plus one counter. Let's plug it. Where do we want this? I guess we'll go maximum damage here. Since they they have a lot of removal, but like, yeah, we, we go maximum damage for sure. While we can. Katilda, nice. Fight rigging buffs it to a 6-6. Six, six. Whoo! Scary stuff. Very scary. Um, They could swing here. That lifelink is bad. <laughs> I think we go for first strike damage here, right? And I think we can let the Wandering Emperor die. So this gets first strike. And then we go plus one. First strike haste. Pretty powerful. Down to eight. Okay, we got the Luxor, which we can always cast next turn, too. We can also just keep the Wandering Emperor open to gobble up the Katilda. Yeah. Yeah, we're gonna do that. We're gonna, we're gonna get everything out there, though. I think it was still worth the first strike. Like, yeah, we could have made a 2-2 before letting our Wandering Emperor die, but... Let's see what they have on that fight rigging. 
Okay, Weaver of Harmony, they get a 2-2 on the ground as well. That is a 9-9 Katilda. Swinging at the Emperor, we are gonna exile you. Set in pack leader, and that is a GG opponent. Well, two meta decks taken down. Well, I don't know if the blue-white uh, control is actually a meta build, but still. <laughs> I'ma count it as a build. I'ma count it. What do we got here? Oh, I clicked through it. Crap. Oh, well. Onwards. Probably just uh, an uncommon, right? Usually is. Usually. What do you have for me, opponent? What are you rocking? Good hand. No red source, but good hand. I don't care. I don't care about that red source. Who needs red? Who needs it? It's not in the title. It's not in my YouTube channel title. Uh-oh. Okay, it's stuck for the opponent, too. This is most likely... Oh. Okay, we didn't keep any removal open. Okay, we got the red. Woo! <laughs> Gonna play that out on red now. Save this to potentially play it out on white. And we don't attack. We gotta save some blockers, guys. Because this, this ability is insane for goblins. Insanity. If they swing, though, and they don't have a lot of damage, we could try to swing right back in with our Reckless Stormseeker. Okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, yep, yep. We just take that. Brutal Cathar off the top would have been insane. Reckless Stormseeker just doesn't feel like it's going to be doing a lot here. Hmm. Because if we end up swinging, they could, they could really pop off next turn and just kill us. Let's see if they trade here with the uh, Stormseeker. Now they, they take the six, yeah. <laughs> that makes sense to me, honestly. Paxong Pup might have been the better play because we'll be able to get it up to... Okay, they Frostbite the first Paxong Pup, so we go ahead and gain three, which is good. Good news. Ob Goblin Captain. Full swing. Gonna take the two from the charger, but it's a worthwhile block. It is. We, we gotta slow this down some t somehow. Okay, now like a wandering emperor from the top two. Man, we really get punished for playing this out on white, don't we? Pretty funny, actually. Because now we can't do two things once again. More life gain from this could be good, but there's a problem. This is about to get first strike. We gotta save everything back as a blocker. We gotta double block at least the uh, Hobgoblin Bandit Lord here. Uh, at least, yeah, this gets first strike. This is gonna get another 2-2 Goblin. So they just need to remove the Storm Seeker out of the equation. Okay, they, they knew we were about to double block into that, so that's pretty smart. It's a double block into the uh, Hobgoblin Captain, though, and then they can buff everything once. Oh, no, they just win. Yeah. Oh, that works, too. Good game opponent. Very nice. Very, very nice. All right, let's go ahead and hop right into the next match, right? Let's do it. We found thy opponent. Hello, opponent. How are you doing today, buddy? Hope all is well in your world. Good hand. Way better than the last hand. 
At least we have the double green sources this time. Like, I, like you get so punished for playing that pathway, don't you? Ah, that would have been nice on turn one, though. We'll get the pack song pup down next turn. We can play everything pretty effectively here. What you thinking about, opponent? What you got? What you doing? Hmm. Okay, I mean, the Ascendant Pack Leader might even be better than the uh, Luxor here, but... Yeah, I'm gonna go the Luxor. Should we have attacked first? Yeah, technically. Uh, not not before the pack song though. You definitely want to get the the counter on the pack song pup. Some simple removal. Some voltage surge. Yeah, simple removal. Okay, we're kind of uh, gathering what the opponent's playing over there. Some basic jund. And that is perfectly all right. It's going to be an uphill battle, though. Yeah, lots of removal and jund. Lots of removal. Without a four mana... Without four mana open, we, uh... We're going to start struggling here. We're going to start struggling pretty fast without four mana. At least we are on level 2 right now. Oh, we got a Kalane on the opponent's side. 4 mana open now. Pretty good. Pretty good, guys. We could go... Uh, we, we, I think we're going to save the Wandering Emperor here. Yeah, we're, we're going to save Wandering Emperor. Well, a couple 2-2s two could be good, too. All right, I'm convinced. Not a lot to hit with the Wandering Emperor. Um, so, technically, we wanted to do that before combat, but maybe that would have made them block, too, and maybe we wouldn't have been able to slip the three damage through. So, it depends. Hal and Al, yeah, that's, that's worthy of a Wandering Emperor. Swinging at my Arlen? Okay. No blocks. We have another Arlen and the Wandering Emperor. What we really want to hit, though, is the Hallandau. Stormseeker's pretty good. They don't know what's in our hand, so blocking one of the 2-2s two would be pretty funny. Four mana open. Okay, they're, they're calling our bluff, and... They were correct. But they're down to 10. It is nighttime. It is nighttime, my friends. Yeah, the mana has been pretty rough in this build so far, hasn't it? Zeotora's Envoy. <laughs> Oh, buddy. That is a card. Watch them not swing with the Hallandale. That is awesome, bro. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Uh, you, you gotta know sometimes to play around the Wandering Emperor. And see, I'm way too greedy to do stuff like that. That would have been a full swing for sure. That would have been a full swing for me for sure. So... Pack Leader is chunky. Pack Leader is very chunky here. Watch watch some uh, simple spot removal just ruin this for me. Easy chump blocker, but I'm going for it. I'm going for it, darn it. Let's go. <laughs> 
<laughs> uh, and then we will go ahead and equip Planeswalker and come out as a creature, little buddy. We want you to get uh, meat hooked just as much as the other creatures. The reason we equip it now, though, is because we're really struggling on mana. Okay, the other Arlen is gone. Uh, Reckless Stormseeker, and it's nighttime. This is huge for the opponent, but if they double swing, we're taking it. It's not going to be a double swing. It's going to be a double swing. No blocks. They're tapped out, and that's that's it. GG. GG opponent. Very nice. Well, I guess I have time for one more match. Let's do it. <laughs> Let's do it. The deck is working out somehow, so that's cool, I guess, right? The Luxor is pretty janky, isn't it, guys? But, like, when it does a thing, it does a thing, and we saw it do a thing there. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, it's pretty neat. I saw land. I clicked. I'm sorry. I, I don't know. Is it good? It's good now. It's good now, guys. <laughs> okay, some is it? Probably just like a spike field hazard or something lame. Lame! Lame. Flame Blessed Bolt. Nice. We've seen a, a lot more of these being played. Is that because Tenacious Underdog is a thing? Is that what it is, guys? Is it Tenacious Underdog ruining our evening? Whoa! This is not, is it? This is Teamer. Reckon they're Bank Buster? Okay. I think I know this Teamer build that they're playing. I think I know of it. Draw a card first. Lair. Get a couple wolves, I'd say. Pretty safely. Relatively safely, I should say. Elspeth comes down pretty strong next turn. You see, if they pass, it goes to nighttime, which is deadly for them. Like being able to make this a 5-5. Five, five. Very deadly. Yeah, so they gotta do something on their turn. Keeping two mana open to tap down the bank buster or potentially something else too. So Elspeth is probably the go-to, but drawing a couple here could be really good too. Keeping the pack song open. Uh, let's go ahead and swing. And we might be doing stuff on their turn, guys. Couple creatures. Couple creatures to play could be huge for us. Okay. Okay. Well, I think it's still gonna be the pack song on their turn and go ahead and get the uh, ranger class down this turn. The reason it's pack song on their turn is if they end up wiping the board, at least we can play pack song after and it'll still be a 2-2 at that point. And then before combat, we can Elspeth minus three and we might have a pretty chunky Pretty chunky board then they have six total mana so they're one away from their titan gonna be desert doom very nice they have one mana open uh, one mana is uh, keeping them open too okay so transforms tonight and it's probably gonna be Creature. Probably Elspeth. Or no, it's probably Reckless Stormseeker, isn't it? Trample. What do we give the Trample to? Reckless Stormseeker. Plus one. Um, this already has trample, so I mean, I guess we give it to itself and just full swing that way. This is a lot of damage. A lot, a lot of damage. 
Make sure everything gets to the five so that way Desert Doom doesn't. Yeah, that's an 80% win rate, guys. G. G. Holy cow. Holy cow. Did we even play a white card that game? No. Wait. Yeah. No, we didn't. That was just some basic wolves. <laughs> Shows the power of werewolves. It really, really does. And Arlen is just really good too in general. And just, just, yeah. Wolves are good. Wolves are very, very good. Let's go ahead and take a look see at the build one more time. Boom. There it is. Very spicy. I like it. What are my final thoughts? I have no idea. I don't know if I would change anything, but there's a big problem in the build, the mana base. Uh, would making a better mana base work better? I don't know, probably not, honestly. There's something really weird where you need a lot of green sources, but then you need those double whites for the Emperor and the Elspeth. And so there's going to be moments where you're looking at the, um, the branch loft and the boulder loft, and you're like, oh, I should play this on white so I can have my Wandering Emperor open. But then you often need to play two green cards in the same turn, and so not playing it on Branch Loft actually punishes you, and it, it punished us a few times, right? Other than that, you'd think it wouldn't with all the other green sources or abilities to get green. The Sundown Pass might be the answer that we're looking for here. We might just drop down to two of these and then go up two more Jetmere's Gardens. Even though the Jetmere's Garden is really, really slow, not missing that double white or the Elspeth or the Wandering Emperor could be huge. Um, and just also making sure you have the red sources for the Reckless Stormseeker, the Dire Overlord, and the Arlen. Yeah, that just makes a lot of sense, right? Other than that, every it, there was some clunky situations where everything just felt a little bit off. Like the, the Luxure Equip 3 instead of Equip 2 is actually just really, really bad. And so it, it felt a little bit off there, didn't it? Other than that, the werewolves in the build are really good. And then, of course, so are the planeswalkers. Everything in the deck is just really good. I think Pack Song Pup is criminally underrated. If you're playing wolves, usually it, there's other wolves that take its place. And they think, like, uh, the naturalist is better and stuff. Naturalist helps you ramp, and that's really, really cool. But the fact that this gets counters every turn, potentially, of course, and then it gains you life when it dies... Like, you saw that goblin deck prioritize killing this before it got out of hand, right? So, that seems pretty spicy, honestly. Guys, if you made it this far into the video, y'all are champions, and I super duper appreciate you, and I will see you in the next video.